Christopher Johnson says that the Jets' new head coach will report directly to him, not GM Mike McCagnan, and the reporting structure remains the same. Christopher Johnson also says that Mike McCagnan is a great talent evaluator. What the f***? Yes, we made it! We have made it, folks. It is 2019. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome aboard here to the Sports Talk Nation. Michael Cohen here with you. It is now 2019, first January 1st, and man, oh man, it is getting crazy now in the National Football League. Black Monday has now come and gone in the National Football League, and we have seen now a total of eight coaching vacancies that are available. Uh, now, of those coaching vacancies, we did know weeks ago that Green Bay and Cleveland would be two of the spots opened. Now we have the Jets, Broncos, Dolphins, Arizona Cardinals, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and Cincinnati Bengals all open for business, all looking for a head coach. And of course, as I, as I will say throughout this episode, and you're going to hear me say throughout this process, because we're going to do a couple of these videos uh, as this thing rolls out, you are going to hear, and we've been hearing rumors fly around all over the place. Some of them are true, some of them may not be true, some of them are just complete crap. And you have to go. You have to go into this thing if you are a fan, and kind of temper yourself just down a little bit, temper your expectations down just a little bit. Uh, you know, there was a rumor out there the other day about Mike McCarthy being a shoe in to go to the Cleveland Browns, and that it was a, a done deal. That came from I don't know who this guy was. It was some 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 report, some reporter claiming to be from out west in Arizona. I didn't see anything anything close to that. On any other source like uh, Ian Rappaport or uh, Adam Scheffner, didn't see anything on that. So the only thing I saw was that he would consider that the Cleveland Browns reached out to him for an interview. That was it. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful on what you are seeing out there in social media right now with regards to these coaching hires because you're going to hear everything and anything that is possible uh, in the next few weeks. As these coaches, as these uh, jobs start to get filled in the NFL, so one team that I'm going to focus on specifically here, since really we've we've really <clears throat> since we really have gotten a huge outpouring of support for our videos that are kind of New York centric, I'm going to try to focus here a little bit on what's going on with the Jets. And of course, they fired Todd Bowles just the other day. They had to do it. They had to fire Todd Bowles. This has been a absolute dumpster fire for the last four seasons under his watch. Not just the record, which speaks for itself, 24 wins to 40 losses, but this was an undisciplined football team. You take a look at the number of penalties that this team got, and really stupid penalties that this team would get flagged for uh, in, in key situations. Just look at the Green Bay game just as an example. You have pass interference penalties at the wrong time. You rough in the pass at the wrong time. You have a guy like uh, Leonard Williams get thrown out of the game for a rough in the pass or pl- uh, penalty. Really, these were... Bad penalties in bad spots, and Bowles really didn't do anything to make those corrections, to discipline this football team. So he had an undisciplined football team. He had locker room turmoil. He had locker room turmoil two years ago with guys like Brandon Marshall, Darrell Rivas, and, uh, and Sheldon Richardson. This year, having locker room, apparently locker room turmoil with guys like Tremaine Johnson, uh, even Jamal Adams going out of his way to speak negatively about the front office and saying, you know, we need we need playmakers here, we need talented guys, which he's right on. He's hundred percent right on. But man, there was a lot there was a lot of things that were going on coming out of that locker room that really should not be happening under a under the watchful eyes of a head coach. And that's why they just had to make this move and had to find had to get Tobbles out of here and bring in somebody that's going to be to batten down the hatches. At the way you know the buck is going to stop with him. That's what they need. They need, you want to say disciplinarian, okay. I mean, I think I think the days of the disciplinarian, the Bill Parcells type disciplinarian, are pretty much over in the NFL for that matter. But you need someone who's going to come in there and command respect as soon as he walks in the room. They need that kind of coach in there right now. Now the question is going to be, who are the Jets going to go out there and get? We know it's not going to be Jim Harbaugh. You can forget about that. Those rumors have come and gone. Uh, Chris Johnson went out of his way, and really he shouldn't have said anything to begin with. Uh, but he went out of his way to say that the Jets were not interested in Jim Harbaugh. That doesn't mean that they weren't interested at one point, but they're not going to go after him. Harbaugh has also said he's not going to leave Michigan anyway, so you can forget that. 
Uh, John Harbaugh, forget about that. He's going to stay with the Ravens. The Ravens have acknowledged that they're going to bring him back. They just won their division title the other day. They're going to the playoffs. They're in the playoffs. They're going to play the Chargers this weekend. He's not going anywhere. Uh, so at least you would have to think, unless the Ravens you know, lose this game this weekend to decide, yeah, maybe we want to maybe we want to trade him for draft picks. But be as it may, he's not going anywhere. So who out there, who are the available guys out there that Jets going to go out there and get? And the one thing that has to worry you about this process, if you are a fan of that football team in New York, is that <laughs> do you really trust this front office to do the right thing? And we saw the the press conference. The, in fact, it wasn't even televised for that matter. But just seeing all the rep- the reports that are coming out from guys like Brian Costello, Rich Samini, and uh, and the like, guys that that were the beat writers for the team, and you start to hear all these things that came out of that press conference, and it has to just sit there. It has to make you worry if you are a fan of the football team. Uh, the idea that. The, that the Jets are not going to change their power structure. They had a power structure there where the general manager and the head coach were on the even playing field and both would report to Christopher Johnson. That's not going to change. The, fa- the idea that Christopher Johnson said that he has no interest in a coach who wants to say in personnel, that is certainly something that would be, uh, you would have to imagine, a negotiation point for any head coach, especially a coach with a strong resume like a Mike McCarthy, or for that matter, to come in here, uh, you would want to have somebody like that to have the same personnel. So that is not going to strike anybody uh, strike anybody rich, for that matter. Uh, you also have the acknowledgement by Christopher Johnson that Mike McCagnan has done a great job, and or that he is a quote-unquote uh, great evaluator of talent. Outside of the Sam Donald draft pick and even the Jamal Adams draft pick, there hasn't been a whole heck of a lot of good drafting here by the Jets under McCagman's watch. Uh, he's had the 2016 and 2017 classes basically run out of town here. He's cut pretty much everybody from those two classes. Uh, outside of Chris Herndon in this draft, and I'm talking about the Sam Darnold draft, outside of Hendren, uh, there aren't a lot of other guys that are coming out of that 2018 draft that he picked up deep in the, in the later rounds that are, are going to be part of this team moving forward. So he has not been a good evaluator of talent. He has taken a lot of risks on free agents, i.e. Tremaine Johnson, who paid $72 million to and who has been nothing but a malcontent for this team. So that's a hard sell right there. That's a real hard sell. So all these comments that came out of that Jet press conference, you have to sit there and say, where is this franchise going? You know, can this can the Jet fan trust what Chris Johnson and Mike McCagnan are going to do as far as finding the next head coach. And it's got to give you pause. And then you hear the other rumors about the different head coaching candidates they are considering. Eric Bieniemy. I'm going to get into each one in a second. Eric Bieniemy, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs. Todd Monken, the uh, offensive coordinator or former offensive coordinator of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, as well as uh, Chris Richard, who is the defensive backs coach for the Seattle Seahawks, and even Jim Caldwell, the former co- head coach of the Colts and the uh, Detroit Lions. Those were the names that were floated out there. Colwell's name has been floated out there for a little about a week now. But these aren't names that are going to get Jet fans jumping out of their seats. Uh, now, the enemy coming out of the Kansas City Chiefs system, he's their offensive coordinator now. We all know how, how good that Kansas City Chiefs offense has been this year. One of the best offenses in football and look, he certainly played his part in that, but it's also you have to acknowledge that it is Andy Reid's system. It is Andy Reid calling the plays there. Uh, the one thing that you look at a guy like Biennemi is this. two different. You can look at it two different ways. You look at it, the history of Andy Reid assistants, and the history of Andy Reid assistants doing well as head coaches has been pretty good. Uh, Doug Peterson was an assistant coach, an offensive coordinator under Andy Reid in Kansas City. And now he is, of course, a Super Bowl winning coach of the Eagles. Matt Nagy was an offensive coordinator with the uh, Chiefs last year, and now this year has taken the Bears to the playoffs at 12 and 4. So the recent history says, yeah, go out there and hire Eric Bienemy as your head coach. At the same time, you have to sit there and wonder, you know, is every single guy that works under Andy Reid going to become a brilliant head coach? You have to pause and say, at what point is this not going to work? 
So you have to be, you have to kind of weigh all the different options. Remember, this is his first year, or first year as an offense coordinator in the NFL. He was an offense coordinator at Colorado University for two years. But still, uh, I, I I think with Biennemi, his fort, Biennemi has, is going to have a lot of opportunities. I don't know if jumping into the Jet job right away is, is, a, is a good fit for him right now, or even for the Jets for that matter. Doesn't mean he won't be a bad, he will be a bad head coach. Doesn't mean he will be a great head coach. I don't know if he was, he'll be the right fit right now. Todd Monken, I don't know too much about Monken other than the fact that he was the offensive coordinator for the Buccaneers this year. And yeah, okay, the Buccaneers were ranked third in, in total offense, but again, that's all based on yards. And you take a look what they've done in points. They're in the middle of the pack in points scored. And that's a Buccaneer team that was going back and forth with different quarterbacks, Jameis Winston, Ryan Fitzpatrick. They couldn't find a guy they liked. And a lot of their numbers were from what happened early in the year when Fitzpatrick was playing and was lighting it up in the first couple of weeks of the year. So I can't sit here and say that Tom Monken is all of a sudden this offensive genius that's going to come here and turn things around for the Jets. I don't, think so. I don't see that at all. I really don't. I don't know if that's a good fit for the New York Jets. 13 wins as a head coach also with Southern Miss, 13-25, 12 games under 500. I don't know about that one. That's a, that would be a hire that wouldn't get me excited if I'm a Jet fan. Chris Richard, you know, I've heard that name thrown out there a lot. And that's because he is a, an, emo, he's an emotional guy. He is a guy who likes to get into, a face, into the faces of his players. He will challenge his players. He was a defensive coordinator with the Seahawks for a few years at the tail end of the uh, Legion of Boom. So he has done, and he's done a nice job. He did a nice job in Seattle. He's done a nice job helping out as a defensive backs coach with the Cowboys. Cowboys have had one of the best defenses in the league this year. And like I said, he's an emotional firebrand coach, okay? Is he ready to be a head coach? I have no idea. His name is interesting. Now, the one thing that would be negative is the fact that he's a defensive guy, not an offensive guy. And you would be basically doing the same thing all over again, bringing in a defensive guy who's a uh, Real forte is in the secondary and played in the secondary, much like Tom Bowles. And you would be relying on him to find that offensive coordinator who's going to get this team moving in the right direction offensively. So that would be the one negative with Richard. I think, I think that he, and look, he is really high, well regarded. A lot of people talk, talk up Chris Richard. Uh, a lot of people feel that he's going to be a good head coach one day. He might very well be a good head coach one day. But the fact is, you can't sell your franchise. You can't sell your fan base on a guy like Chris Richard right now. You can't sell your fan base on any of these other guys right now. Your fan base wants a coach that's going to be a difference maker. Your fan base. I know that there's a saying, you can't listen to the fans. You've got to you know, be smart and you know, use all the football people. I totally understand that. But the fact is, you're in a position right now, if you're the Jets, where you have a young quarterback... You have a guy that could be a franchise-winning quarterback for this team for a while. You have some nice young pieces here. You have a, an opportunity with $100 million in payroll to form a really good t- football team. You've got to bring in a coach who's going to command respect right away, who's going to be a presence, who is going to have, you know what, let's be honest here, a resume, a resume of success. That's what you need right now. There should be a sense of urgency for this team right now. You can't go out there and say, we're going to bring in another assistant coach here from the Nash Football League who has little to no head coaching experience and expect that to be okay. You've been doing that for decades. This franchise has done that for decades. We could go back We can go back to guys like Eric Mangini, Rex Ryan, Todd Bowles, uh, you know, Al Grow, Herman Edwards, even to an extent, all these guys were defensive guys. All these guys were assistant coaches. All these guys came in here in the prospect of, hey, maybe they could be great head coaches one day. They could, you know, be that next big time coach. And yes, Herman Edwards got the Jets to the playoffs three times in five years. Yes, Rex Ryan got the Jets to the AFC Championship game twice. But you know, are these guys still here? No, they're not. Those guys were were fired or let go for a reason. And you want to go down that road again? You can't do that. You can't sell your fan base on that. 
So that's why you have to go out there and try to bring in a guy like a, a established guy like Mark McCarthy. Now, the big question is, well, what's happened here with that rumor? You know, the rumor was that he was going to go to the Browns. And that has been unsubstantiated. And now the talk now is that after we got some legitimate reports from Ian Rappaport of the NFL Network, uh, which was then re- later republished by Brian Costello of the New York Post, that the Jets will, in fact, will interview Mike McCarthy for the head coaching position. And I say, let it happen. Thank goodness. And I know that the Packers had their warts this year, going 11-16 and 16 in the last two years, 11-16 and 16 won the last two years with McCarthy, and they weren't very good this year. And he had that horrible game McCarthy did uh, with, the, uh, with the game management and clock management up in Seattle uh, a couple, couple weeks before he got fired by, by the Packers. I, told, I, I understand that. I, I know that. But this guy won 125 games. This guy won a Super Bowl. This guy has a resume. This guy found a way to win with not just one, but two superstar quarterbacks. You have to go out there and bring him, and he is an offensive guy. He was a quarterback coach at one point before he ever became a head coach. This would be the guy you bring in. And there's going to be a lot of teams that feel that way. All eight of these teams could feel that they are the spot for Mike McCarthy right now. And they would have a legitimate point. Arizona has Josh Rosen. Now, I understand that uh, there was a report by Jason Lockin for CBS, that uh, McCarthy rejected the Cardinals' overtures, that they were willing to give him full control. He he just said absolutely not. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, of course, with Baker Mayfield would be, a, would be a good landing spot for him. The Broncos, based on their history and reputation, are a good landing spot for him. The Bengals, with Andy Dalton, with a bunch of veteran players they have, are a good landing spot for him. There are a lot of good landing spots for Mike McCarthy. No doubt about it. But if you are the Jets, you've got to get out there and you've got to sell this to him. You've got to explain that this is the perfect spot for him right now. Do not let him walk out that door. That's the thing. Lock, lock the doors behind. <laughs> lock the doors basically behind him, and uh, make sure he signs, puts his name on the uh, dotted line. If you are the Jets, be your next head coach. And if he doesn't, you still got to go out there and find a coach that has a substantial resume. You know, you can, you have to be able to sell this, sell this team not just to your fans but to your players. That you're going out there and you're putting forth the effort to bring in a, bring in a big big time coach here to, cha- to change the. The, the climate, that's what they need most of all. It's just to change the culture of this franchise. You know, what did Jamal Adams talk about? He talked about culture. He talked about bringing in, bringing in legitimate, big-time players, attracting name free agents in here. And the way you do that is if you have a culture that's all about winning, all about success. And right now, are the Jets about that? Are they about success? Are they about winning? The answer is right now is no. The answer is absolutely not. So we're going to find out who the Jets are in the next couple of weeks. Well, this is this is going to happen really quickly, folks. And like I said at the top, there's going to be a lot of rumors. There's going to be a lot of nonsense going on. Some stuff is going to be factual. Some stuff is not. You just got to walk through it. But we'll see where this Jet team goes in the next couple of weeks. And, you know... This is not to, to say that guys like Chris Richard or Todd Monken aren't going to be good head coaches. Maybe they will be good head coaches. I have no idea. But you got to sell your team. you got to sell your, your, your franchise. you got to sell your fans. you got to sell your players on something better than that, better than more of the same. So that's where we are right now, folks, on this podcast, the Open Mic Program. Again, we're going to follow the story. It's, it's going to get crazy over the next few weeks. You're going to hear, again, like I said, a lot of rumors. We'll see how this thing plays out. Uh, we're going to do a lot of videos. we still got some more hot stove baseball stuff we're going to get through here in the next couple of weeks. So as 2019 gets going, we're going to get going again on a lot of videos. I know it's been kind of slow in producing a lot of stuff here on the channel. But, uh, you know, trying to work around work hours and all that stuff. But we are going to do that. We're going to bring you that content. Uh, so we'll do a little thing on the playoffs. A very short little thing predicting the playoffs before it starts. Of the NFL, well, as like I said, we'll do some hot stove stuff, and we'll continue to follow this coaching carousel in the National Football League. So, remember, like and subscribe, folks, right here on fa- on on the on YouTube channel. Remember, follow us uh, on on Facebook, facebook.com slash Open Mic Program, as well as uh, at Open Mic NJ on Twitter. Talk to you next time, everybody. Happy New Year.